All right, following on from the overview video for subphylum crustacea and phylum arthropoda, uh, we're going to look at the crustaceans. Remember it said that, that we had about a million different species of insects and other arthropods. 67,000 known species, roughly, of, arth of crustaceans. So very diverse. That's a lot of different animals. All right, most of them are marine. I bet you can think of a freshwater one. We saw it in the last video. Um, have two pairs of antenna, and um, then they modify the basic body plan in many ways. So here is our cephalothorax. There's our little animal with one pair of antenna, two pairs of antenna. Lots of different appendages, lots of appendages, and an abdomen. There's your basic body plan. Let's go ahead and have a look. All right, they are usually um, not only dioecious, but they often have a very distinct difference between the male and female. So you might not be able to tell the difference between a male and a female sea star, but um, these ones you can tell the difference, and uh, that's an important distinction if you're a cray hunter. Uh, they also have this nucleus larva which is common to almost all uh, crustaceans. Let's have a look. Here's the generalized uh, nauplius larva, single eye spot, and then a couple of spikes for protection, and then of these little appendages with setae at the end. Here's what one looks like before it is metamorphosed into an adult. And here's one under a scanning an electron microscope. And you'll notice that they have these setae, but they also have an exoskeleton, and they still, these, even these little stages have to go through lots and lots of molds. All right, so we're gonna be looking at um, two of the classes within the subphylum crustacea, Malacostrica and Maxillopoda, all right? Malacostrica is gonna be most of the ones that you're going to um, be familiar with. But think about, one of the things to remember with the Malacostra is they have these tail fans, okay? So think of the tail with a fan at the end of a crayfish and that will help you remember Malacostra. All right, so this is a general body plan of a Malacostrican arthropod crustacean, okay. So they've got the uropod, which are the uropods, which are the um, the edges of the fan, and then the telson, which is the central part of the fan of the tail. They've got an abdomen, which will have some number of joints, okay, or some number of, of sections, and it's jointed, okay. They've got pleopods which are the abdominal, abdominal segments. They've got periopods, which are the thoracic segments. And what, what was the thorax? The thorax was the middle part, the chest, okay? But remember, in the crustaceans, that is combined with the head into this thing called the cephalothorax. So the periopods are the um, walking legs. And then finally, they have the maxillipeds, which are going to be up at, uh, around the mouth. They'll often be three pairs, and those are for manipulating food. Okay, so three different kinds of appendages that, well, well, also that you also have the uropods and telson, so those are the um, the tail fan, and then you also have the antennas, but um, you, what you think of as legs, you have the pleopods, the periopods, and the maxillopeds as the, the three main types of um, arms or legs. So you also have the antennule, antennule and the antenna, so you've got a pair of each of those, and then the, if it's got a pointy bit on its cephalothorax, then that is called the rostrum. 
Not all of them do, of course. And the covering that goes over the cephalothorax is called the carapace. Okay, the carapace. They also have compound eyes, and you'll know this from looking at like a fly's eye or a spider's eye, you know that there are uh, lots and lots of little um, eyes all put together. And that's the same as the crustaceans. All right, let's have a look at some of the orders and super orders within uh, Malacostrica. You won't be responsible for Hoplocarida or Stomatopoda. I'll ask you to know the common name, mantis shrimps, the common names for most all of these orders that we're going to be look at, looking at, and super orders. So, but the, um, uh, I would like you to know uh, what the common name for these animals is and also what, um, how to recognize these different things, like what a mantis shrimp looks like. So these are very fast ambush predators and there are lots of videos on YouTube showing how these things actually ambush their prey and hunt. These are things like pistol shrimp um, uh, and mantis shrimps, things that can grasp or punch or make sound uh, in order to stun their prey. But you can see, here we have the abdomen. Okay, and we have the, uh, the tail fan, telson and uropods. Look at the cephalothorax here um, with a giant front grasp, grasping appendage. Okay, there's one of the periopods. Here are your pleopods. And um, two sets of antennas, one and two. Okay, so you got your general uh, body plan. Here is a beautiful mantis shrimp. You can see one set of antennas here, one set of antennas here, okay? Compound eyes, and here, these ones are a, a type of shrimp that sort of punches, okay? And um, here's another view of the telson and uropods. Okay, so uropods are the two on the outside, the telson is the central one. All right, so these are the, um, another order, uh, the euphosids. They're very important. I don't, um, not requiring you to know the euphosid, but you will read euphosid shrimp quite a bit. And whenever people are talking about euphosid shrimps, they're talking about krill. The reason they're so important is because they're a beautiful link they're a, they're a very important link from the small algae that they eat. Um, these are one-celled microscopic algae, and then these things are big enough then to uh, become whale and penguin food, and so they are the basis of, they're the link from the basis of the food chain up to these big animals. You can see right here, these appendages have been modified because they are, um, planktonic organisms, or you might call them nectonic because they can't swim, but they uh, live up in the water column rather than crawling around. There's one pair of antennas, two pairs of antennas, same body plan, okay, carapace over the cephalothorax and the big abdomen. Telson and uropods down here, pleopods modified for swimming, and these ones you can see modified for filter feeding. Here is another picture of these um, periopods, beautifully modified as strainers for filter feeding. And you can see the little, this is the little cleared out area of where there's no, um, there aren't any, there's no particulate matter because they've strained it out and eaten it. Okay, those are the shrimp, uh, the uh, euposit shrimp krill. All right, let's have a look at decapods. All right, decapods, deca for 10. All right, and they do tend to have 10 walking legs. Crabs, prawns, shrimps, crays, amphipods, isopods. These are ones which you're probably familiar with as ones that you're, you're going, that are used, commonly eaten by, um, by people. All right, so well-developed carapace, and just start thinking about the body plan of a, of a crayfish. Three pairs of maxillopeds, those are the 
for the parts used for manipulating food, five pairs or ten pods. these are the walking legs, and then the very first ones are often chelate, making a hinged claw. Okay, we have a claw like this. This is a chelate appendage. The appendage is chelate, that is the adjective. Okay, and this is non chelate, no claw. All right, a chile is a claw, and that is the noun. Chelate is the adjective which describes a, an appendage with a claw. Uh, here's a uh, common glass shrimp. All right, very small shrimp, walks around, and you can see the five pairs of uh, legs. Maxillopeds and the antennas up here. Anyway, you can see the here's the carapace over the um, the cephalothorax. Here's the abdomen back here. Same body plan. All right, when you look at the uh, underside of the of the tail of a decapod, generally the last or the very first, the ones closest to the carapace are going to, uh, on the males, are going to look a little bit different and they are adapted for copulatory organs. They're adapted to, as a, um, with a groove for sperm to be deposited. And most of the, most of the females will have um, branched pleopods, so they'll um, have sort of the swimmerette kind of bit and then they'll have a branch to attach eggs to. So lots of eggs get attached. And then you've probably seen a uh, crayfish in berry, all right, where the uh, eggs are attached. And they generally keep their eggs attached underneath their tail for protection. Here's a freshwater crayfish in berry. All right, so you can see the eggs attached until they're ready to hatch, so they have a bit of parental care. Here's a uh, nice zoea. You'll see these quite a bit, actually, in the, in the water column. All right, so there are two types of uh, decapods, the long-bodied form, which are shrimp and crayfish, and then the short-bodied form, which are um, the, uh, the things like paddle crabs, where the abdomen is folded underneath the thorax. So. Here's what they look like. So here's your shrimp and with your abdomen. Here's the, the oh, this is a um, uh, kind of a free swimming shrimp you can see by the, the uh, pleopods. And here's a crawling, a benthic one. And you can see the tail's a little bit heavier and it's got walking legs and it's, um, and the, uh, uh, the carapace is a little bit thicker. And then what happens with these true crabs is that the tail, the abdomen, is reduced and folded underneath like here. There is still an abdomen. It doesn't look like there's an abdomen, a separate abdomen, but there is. And this is what it looks like. So here is the abdomen folded over in the male, adapted for um, depositing sperm. And you can see this wider one in females adapted for uh, brooding eggs. Okay, um, nothing too different to tell you about dendrobranchiata. These are prawns, okay, and carida, all right. These are ones that have two chelate first appendages, and brachiora are the true cab crabs like paddle crabs. Um, Here's an interesting paddle crab with, um, it's a decorator crab. You can see the chelate first appendages, two of them. And they have these little hooks that they hook things onto and grow on the, as a decorator crab. Uh, and they give them camouflage. But also things like uh, if they put sponges on them, they might taste bad onto their shell. Here's what we were talking about with a sponge. All right, you can see how well camouflaged and well protected this uh, this little crab is. All right, let's uh, look at anamurans. All right, 
Those so Anamira are a little bit different. They're the hermit crabs and squat lobsters, and they usually have a unprotected, a very reduced size of thickness of their uh, their exoskeleton on the back. All right, they. And they generally have a reduced exoskeleton because they live inside the shell of a dead gastropod for, for a cover. And here's what they look like. They actually have an abdomen that is sort of, um, it's not torsion, but it's, it's, it grows a little bit asymmetrically. So it grows off to one side as it goes, as it gets a bit bigger. And this is a live um, mantis, or sorry, a live hermit crab inside of a glass shell to show how it actually curls up inside that shell and withdraws itself in. So you also have the things called uh, these little filter feeders called um, half crabs and if you turn over any rock in a uh, rock pool or uh, a, a rocky shore you probably find these things in the intertidal zone. Here's the order Palinura, which is your typical um, crayfish. And uh, you can see the, well, these are the spiny lobsters, not the, the crayfish with uh, big chelate first appendages. Okay, so they've got a long first antenna. It's not bendy like this, but, uh, and then um, they are in the decapod family. family. And I know this has been a very long video, but um, you, it's show, it helps to show the massive diversity in the arthropods. Here you can see the, uh, the Telson and Europods. Okay, so we, we're winding up seeing the same body plan, and this it goes for the same for these ghost shrimp, which have these very large claws used in sexual displays and competition. But carapace, abdomen, two pairs of antenna, one, two, and uh, you'll see the same body plan throughout all these arthropods.